Hello. Morning. Morning. It is morning still. Right. How was your Sunday? Good. So far. Good so far. All right. Uh, so today will be an introductory. Right. How many of you guys are uh, for the weekday batch? Okay. So you guys are for the weekday batch. Great. So rest are for the weekend. Right. Okay. <clears throat> So what we'll be dealing with in this session is that how do we approach this exam? So we'll be also talking about uh, what propelled you guys to take up this examination or embrace this journey, so as to speak. So that part we'll be talking about. Apart from that, we'll be discussing the syllabus as well, right? What are the pitfalls in most of the preparations, right? So most of the people start their preparation quite early some start later in their lives right however there are certain common mistakes which people make right it is important for us to rectify those mistakes right so that part also will be dealing with time management is another thing and uh, most importantly people talk a lot about you know the newspapers isn't it how to study the newspapers how to go about it, the important you know, sources for your preparation. So these are some of the broad things we talk about. And also, maintaining the momentum, isn't it? One of the uh, major uh, problem with the preparation part is that maintenance of that momentum, right? You kickstart your journey with a lot of motivation. After some time, that recedes. Isn't it? Say two months into preparation, three months into preparation. So that goes back. Isn't it? You take a step backwards and you have moved 10 steps back. Right? That's what actually happens. So for that reason, it's important for us to you know, go on that journey without making mistakes. You have to not make mistakes as much as possible. Right? Not make mistakes. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Is it the right time for you to start the preparation? That's the first thing we are, to, uh, we are going to take up. See, this examination requires a minimum of one year and eight months, right? One year and eight months. This is a minimum requirement. That is a total of 20 months, right? So that much time is required for sure, right? So 20 months time, it's including the examination process. So your exam starts when? June. In the month of June, next year June. So your interview is in the month of? 2020, isn't it? So you are for 2019, so it will be in 2020. So 2020, by then, 2020 March, right? March and April, by then it will be 20 months for sure, right? So you have a lot of time for preparation part. Is it the right time to start? Yes, this is the right time. Most of the people take up the you know preparation part as late as October. But given the trends in this examination, given the dynamics involved in this examination, you have to you know put in that extra effort, extra bit of effort. Uh, you can see people from various streams flocking in to prepare for civil services. Earlier it was not the case. There were select few, a few people, right, who had, you know, set their minds long back to prepare for this examination. Now it's not the case. People from various walks of life are entering this arena, isn't it? So people who are, you know, who are already having a job, these people also are flocking in, isn't it? So why is it so? Uh, maybe it's because, you know, the word has spread, you know, quite, you know, voraciously over time. Right, so it has spread quite a lot, and uh, people have become, you know, uh, rather educated, isn't it? They have known about civil services. Earlier, in pockets, you would see people talking about civil services, isn't it? Now, almost every person knows about civil services. It's because of the, you know, knowing of the stuff, right? People are flocking in. Right, how to start your preparation? To start your preparation. First, build your basics. Basics, the fundamentals, right? The fundamentals form the important part. 
until and unless you are sound with the fundamentals for your preparation, it becomes really, really difficult to go forward. Fundamentals are the important part. To build a strong fundamental you know, base, to build a strong base, foundation, there are certain book sources you need to refer to, right? There are some book sources. So we'll be talking about those book sources later, right? So for just now, I'll be telling it is NCRTs. NCRTs. These are very, very, very important. No matter what other people say, no matter how you know uh, other people speak less of NCRTs, they might be claiming that NCRTs are not so important. We'll be giving you the notes. That stuff is sufficient. You can never replace these books. It's impossible to replace these books, right? This is the quality you have to maintain in your answers. So the NCRT standard. This is the standard you have to maintain in your answers when it comes to the mains examination. Right? It's not like you are going to write, uh, uh, which is rather, you know, word voice. That is to say, with too many words which are complex in your answers. You should not be like that. Rather, a simple language, a lucid language, which other people can understand. So that's the standard NCRTs maintain. And also the information which is put into NCRTs, it's based on a lot of research and it is a source which is rather reliable. Right? It's not the case with most of the other sources. Right? For that reason, this becomes really, really important. Right? <coughs> so, how many of you be, uh, I know deserve to become you know, IAS officers? Right? It's a question I do not want to ponder upon. Right? I do not want to ask you this question. Or for that matter, I do not want to you know, judge or prejudge people. It's a question you have to ask yourself. So it's something you have to find the reasons for. Why do you have to become an IAS officer, or for that matter, any other service, right? IPS or you know revenue service, whatever it is. It's the question you have to ask yourself, right? If I ask you this question, uh, it would be a preconceived notion for me that I'll be making a prejudgment after some days, right? I do not want to put myself in that position. I do not want to put you in that position. So. Generally, you know, the people who get into civil services, who want to get into civil services, uh, should have a you know, clear mindset to serve the people, right? Some people have this mindset where, uh, let's say, it's a skewed mindset, whereby they have this mindset of making money, right? Clinging on to power for long. So, power is one motivation. It's a very strong motivation, right? It's a motivator, very good motivator. And the other thing is money, right? So when you ask some people, why do you want to become an IAS officer or any other officer? They say, with you know, designation comes the power and money, right? So if that's what is driving you, I would say it's time you make amends to those motivators, right? So those come invariably when you become an officer, right? But the thoughts should be quite good. That is to say, just do something to the society, to give back something back to the society. That's what should be there in mind, right? All right. <clears throat> Anybody has given the exam earlier? Before this? This examination? No one? You have attempted. So, had you, uh, have you prepared earlier? Yeah, I no. prepared for a couple of months. Okay, a couple of months. Okay, uh, that means you are a fresher. Yeah. Anyways. You have to keep in mind that uh, because the competition is so intense that you have to be pretty, you know, fast, right? When it comes to clearing the examination, with time, the competition only increases, right? And the people who come behind, you, that is the generation next, right? Let's say you have spent like two years in preparing and uh, you are not able to get through three years in preparation. You're not able to get through the generation which comes behind you obviously will be a bit smarter you have to accept that fact isn't it so would you not accept that you have to accept that fact the generation which is you know just like three years behind you or four years behind you they will have progressed a lot right so those guys will be rather good when it comes to you know dealing with stuff right so that fact you have to accept for this reason, you have to be really quick, 
when it comes to grasping this, you know, grabbing this opportunity. So, the quicker, the better, right? The quicker, the better. And one more thing is, you have to maintain that intensity. If you don't maintain the intensity the first time, the next time becomes difficult. Why? Because there is this generation coming, so competition increases, that's for sure. Apart from that, one year you have prepared or two years you have prepared and you have not put in full efforts, now it becomes problematic. Two years have on, what am I supposed to do now? You will start preparing but not with the full intensity you started with, isn't it? That problem will be there. So it's better you put in all the efforts in your first attempt. It's always better to do that, right? So you have to lure certain things in your lives. Maybe you are enjoying a lot now, right? You have to give up certain things. These are small sacrifices. So I would not call it sacrifice. It is a trade-off, isn't it? It's a trade-off. It's not a sacrifice. So nothing comes for free, at least in today's world. Does anything come for free? Do you get anything for free? Anything at all? Nothing, right? So for that reason, it's a trade-off, right? You have to give up on certain things, right? So only when you give up on certain other things, you'll be able to move forward, right? So no parties, right? No outings, uh, uh, no long trips, right? So such things have to be given up, at least for one and a half years time, right? Anyways, you will be taken for the Bharat Darshan once you get through, right? So when you have this probationary period, right? So when you are being trained, uh, you know, before the starting of the training, you'll be taken for the Bharat Darshan. So at that point in time, you can enjoy a lot, right? <coughs> okay, I'll be speaking about five important things, right, for this examination. One. These are the right things you need to do. These are the boxes you need to tick. Invariably, you have to tick these boxes. What is the knowledge part? The first thing is the knowledge part. Right? These are like, you know, you know the Ratnas. Ratna means, what is a Ratna? Gems. Gems, jewels, right? So, let's say you have three Ratnas in Jainism. Right? You have three Ratnas. Likewise, we have five ratnas for this examination, let's say. So, what is the knowledge, right? <coughs> you should gain the right knowledge. That is, the knowledge come, should come from reliable sources, right? Whenever you get a source, make sure that it is a reliable source, okay? Do not base your knowledge on something that comes in WhatsApp. You know, just say, you have a lot many websites out there, right? You have a lot many, you know, material. You can find a hell number of materials out there. For every subject, you have like 30 to 40 sources. Choosing the right one, right, only can impart the right knowledge, okay? It has to be a reliable source. That thing you have to keep in mind. And also, Make sure that the you know source you are getting the knowledge from, you are in constant touch with it, right? So the source can be a person, the source can be a newspaper, or for that matter, uh, some you know material from some institute, this institute, right? So you have to make sure that you are in constant touch. What happens is there are certain you know areas which continue for time. For example, there is an issue. Syrian issue, right? The Syria conflict has been going on since 2011. <coughs> so, if you want to grasp this, you know, concept completely related to Syria, it's obvious that you have to stick to that very particular source, isn't it? So, only then you'll understand the whole story. You keeping on shifting source to source would only, you know, obfuscate the things, confuse. It would cause confusion in you, right? For that reason, these two things. Reliability is one part and the other part is what? Sticking to the source. You have to stick to the source invariably. Right? Next is the strategy part. So, the next part is the strategy. 
So what do you do about strategy? Do you have a right strategy? Do we have a right strategy for cracking this examination? I would say this is completely individualistic in nature, right? It is totally subjective when it comes to strategy. It's like, you know, one size does not fit everyone. You have to accept that, right? So one size does not fit all. Different people have different strategies. For some, it's easier if the material is, you know, given at once. For some people, it's easier to, you know, um, ingrain the information if it is given in parts, isn't it? And also for some people, it's, uh, you know, easier if they start a subject and complete that subject. You know, for them, this looks good. For other people, start a subject, complete some 30%, go to the next subject, complete 30%. So, different people have different strategies. So, it is completely individualistic. You have to point out this quite early. Right? You have to find yourselves quite early when it comes to the strategy part. What is your strategy going to be? Which strategy works for you well? Right? That you have to, you know, find yourselves. So on that part, we'll be helping you out. Because there will be tests on a regular basis. Right? We'll get to know how you are performing. When you are not performing well, maybe, we'll call you up and you can talk to us where you are lagging and then we'll make any means required for your strategy right on that part we will help you out however finding that strategy right strategy is something which is left on you right okay you have to find this early because the entire process has to be quick isn't it right next is the guidance part okay so the third one is the guidance part Most people today uh, claim that you know they prepared on their own, right? Most people claim they prepared on their own. I'm not actually defending the you know, coaching institutes per se. What I'm trying to say is, it's just that the early footsteps, at least the early footsteps, have to be guided by someone. There has to be some sort of mentorship, isn't it? So to start with, where to start? Isn't it? For that you need guidance. And once you find the right mentors, right, make sure you have this contact for a longer period of time. Do not keep changing the mentors. Right? So you have a particular subject on which you know you do not have any idea at all. Right? So a particular teacher teaches you that subject. And it's important that you maintain contact with that teacher. Right? Whenever you have a doubt, you have to approach the lecturer. The problem is, if you don't approach, you are the one who will be on the losing end. You have to understand that quite clearly. Right? So, you, whenever you get a doubt, any subject, make sure that you get that doubt clarified as early as possible. Okay? Why? Because the entire syllabus you have here, if you miss out on a topic or a subject or so as to say a chapter it has interlinkages with other chapters as well so learning other chapters would be difficult or the learning of other chapters would not be wholesome if it has to be wholesome you should be knowing all the basic topics properly so you have to get these topics clarified and I would say it's important you learn it from the person with whom you have that comfort zone with right so you find a mentor right and you approach that person whenever you have a doubt with any any subject for that matter right and then comes the attitude what about this part the starting part of your learning right the attitude you should have is that you have many things to learn right it's the attitude you have to maintain till the end i think it's a life lesson you have to keep in mind not a single day should you wake up and say i know everything which is required for upsc examination right 
You should always say what your attitude should be. There is much more to learn. That's the attitude you should wake up with. Only that provides elbow room for learning more. The day you decide that I know almost everything which is required for the examination. Yes, it's a confidence booster, but it will not be in a position uh, that pride in you, you know, overwhelms you and you will not, you know, look into the specific aspects maybe which are required for the examination. So you become overzealous, overconfident and probably you will overlook, overlook certain things which are required for the examination. So for that reason, a right attitude, right? The attitude is what? Yes, you are still to learn too many things, right? And then comes the efforts part. What about the efforts? There's a famous thing said by, uh, you know, uh, Aurobindo. You must be knowing Aurobindo, right? Sri Aurobindo. Have you heard of him? So, Sri Aurobindo. So, this person, right, said famously at one point in time, I'll paraphrase it, right? I'm very bad when it comes to, you know, rote memorizing stuff. I can never remember a single line that is which is given in the book. Verbatim, I can never remember it. I can remember the concept, but not the exact line, right? So I am going to paraphrase what this person has said. So there was this uh, sannyasi, you know, some sage. A person went to him, to the sage, and uh, he said, uh, uh, "See, sir, I am not able to find water, right?" Uh, I have been putting in a lot of efforts, I am not able to find water. Uh, so he gave out a lot many ways in which he has tried to get water. So Aravindo said, uh, sorry, the sage said, go dig 100 meters or 100 feet to so get water. So he went and he started digging. He dug in 100 feet but he was not able to find water. Why? Why was he not able to find water? Sage Ju bola tha, 100 feet dig karo, you'll find water. But he was not able to find water after digging 100 feet. So what he had done, right, the person who went for the suggestion, what he had done was, he had dug in 10 feet at 10 places. So, that's feet, 10 places, 10 into 10, 100 feet hua. Toh paani nahi mila, obvious hai. So, kiska problem hai? Problem kiska tha? The person, the person had dug in at 10 places. Uska problem tha. He had to dig in at one place, right? So your efforts should not be spread too wide, too thin. This is the problem with most of the efforts. You spread your efforts too wide and too thin, right? Efforts concentrate on at one place. When you are preparing, when you are studying, your concentration has to be on studying, on nothing else. Waha pe match chal raha hai, yaha pe pad raha hai. Right? Koi out ho gaya, toh, he was a batsman you love. Toh, what you do? Yaha pe dekha, wo out ho gaya hai. You are emotional. Remember this part. You can never study when you are too happy. You can never study when you are too sad. So, Studying happens only when you have that equanimity, right? Equanimity, equanimity matlab, neither too sad, not too happy, right? So that balance has to be struck. Only at that point in time, you'll be studying. Have you ever studied when you are too happy? Even if you have studied, can you remember it? It's impossible, right? It's impossible. Oh, equanimity hona chahiye. For that reason, concentration has to be on what? Just the studying part. Okay? Do not spread your resources too wide. And the cognitive you know, faculties we have, right? The cognitive abilities we have. Uh, you know, it's immense, provided we concentrate on one thing. Right? It's immense. Well, our mind's power is, you know, mind-boggling, so as to speak. But it has to be concentrated. Many people would say that, would claim that multitasking. Right? So people do multitask. So it's 
impossible for a person to multitask with equal performance, that is with best performance. Completing two tasks with the best you know, outcome for both the tasks is impossible. So this is a proven fact. So there have been a lot of studies done in psychology, so it's a proven fact. So it cannot happen, right? <clears throat> Okay, when it comes to your completion of syllabus, so as to speak, how should you go about it, right? And remember, just hard work does not fetch you anything. So, you have to have what? Smart work as well. So, what is that smart work? Smart work kya hota hai? Syllabus has to be sort of road memorized. Always keep in mind what is there in the syllabus. Right? Always keep in mind. And uh, also, it's important for you to know that you have to leave out many things while you are preparing. So that's the smart part. Right? UPSC can ask anything under the sun. It doesn't mean that they ask recklessly. Right? So, if they are asking a question, there has to be a reason behind it. So, if you are able to pinpoint the reason, right, reasons behind, you know, asking of the questions, there is going to be a theme, there is going to be some sort of, you know, uh, you know decision making process going on in the UPSC as to on what things we have to ask questions. So, if you are able to point out that fact, on the lines on which UPSC is asking question, probably things become easier for you, right? So the newspaper uh, which starts, you know, in the front page, there is political news. For sure, you are going to know that this news item is not important for us. How do you know it? Because UPSC is not interested in politics, right? So BJP is doing Congress is doing you know, UPSC is not concerned about it, isn't it? So how do you know this? Because over years, we have seen that UPSC is not asking questions. Uska mindset kuch hai, right? We have to know the mindset of UPSC. So when it comes to the asking of questions, the dynamics have changed over years. It's the dynamics in the sense, some years they have asked analytical questions, some years they have asked factual questions, some years too many current affairs questions, some years a mix of both analytical and factual questions. So this is how UPSC has been. I am speaking about just the last five years. Not before that. Just the last five to six years. So the things have changed a lot. The dynamism, the frequency of you know dynamics you know put into UPSC question papers is too much. The frequency is too much. Earlier, five years they used to change the you know pattern. Now, every year, there is a change in pattern, right? The number of questions will be the same. The nature of the questions, it keeps on changing year on year. And also, you cannot expect UPSC to ask a prescribed set of questions or a particular set of uh, set number of questions from each subject. Every year, it keeps on changing. Probably this year, they ask some 20 questions from polity. Next year, maybe there are only two, right? So, there's no guarantees there. So, you have to be well versed with almost every subject. So, before 2012, hardly there used to be any questions on your ancient India and medieval India. Now, they are asking questions on ancient and medieval India. Right? So, history part, especially the ancient and medieval, so that is gaining some traction these years. Right? Okay. <coughs> First, we'll deal with the Hindu newspaper, also as to say the newspapers, how to deal with it. Stick to only one newspaper, okay? The Hindu. Not everything is important in Hindu, right? You should study the newspaper in such a way that over a period of time, let's say in one and a half months time, you should be able to complete the paper in one and a half hours, right? This is the maximum time you should take. 
and moreover we have started this initiative whereby we'll be uh, putting out this daily news analysis of the Hindu newspaper so the efforts you have to put in will be much much lesser comparatively right all you need to do is go through the news analysis it will be a video and also the PPT will be given to you so no need of going through the newspaper at all just a glance through the newspaper and going through the PPT so the things will be simpler this way apart from this the Hindu newspaper apart from this you had to go through the Indian Express just the editorial part right so just two pieces of editorial will be there and which piece to select and which piece to leave out so that's important so for that reason you'll get to know about this only when you know the syllabus properly right so know the syllabus properly and also the previous year papers just a cursory reading of the previous year's papers is very important I'm not saying you should be able to answer these I'm saying before you start a subject right just go through the previous year papers just read the questions no need to answer them just read the questions say for example I'm handling your um, economy Indian economy I'm about to start the inflation chapter so I'll tell to you that I'll be taking the inflation class tomorrow just go through the inflation you know related questions from the previous papers I'm not asking you to go through the last 30 40 years just the last 10 years right so where do you get it you find books all over previous year question papers right so previous year question papers solved we will die unsolved we will die I would say go with the unsolved one because solved may there will be a lot of mistakes most of the time so just go through the questions and then start the chapter now you'll understand what to look out for what not to look out for right if you do it in the starting it will be easier the things will be easier if you do it later it will become burdensome it will become burdensome for a reason now if you do it ek hi subject hoga ek subject chal raha hai uske saath you are doing it in bits and pieces at a later stage let's say after four months you'll have too much on your plate the number of subjects will have increased jo complete hua hai okay. the number of subjects will have increased now it becomes problematic isn't it so dealing with two to three subjects is easier when it becomes seven to eight subjects it becomes really really difficult right for that reason so if it should not look difficult this is the thing you need to do and also one more question will be you know resolved uh, that you know that will be lingering in your mind when you do this what sort of questions do come from this chapter right that problem will also be solved right so before starting a chapter go through the questions just the questions so after the completion of the chapter if you find that the you know lecturer has not covered that topic on which the question has been asked already so you can just point it out the person uh, the lecturer is going to complete that part as well right okay this is about the Hindu newspaper and the Indian Express apart from this which other sources you need to go through for current affairs uh, PIB is one right uh, for that I would not suggest you to go through the press information bureau the website there's no need for you to go through the website whatever news items which are required will be given to you in a handout on a weekly basis right so you need not go through it right one particular magazine you need to go through is Yojana no need of going through Kurukshetra right go through Yojana select few important articles in that uh, just because jo Yojana aata hai, uh, that is a theme based one they select an issue for example RTI issue the entire you know Yojana magazine will be for RTIs so different authors different viewpoints will be there so give a cursory reading to it and select the important pointers and make more right so that's what you need to do when it comes to Yojana apart from this nothing else is required don't you know have too many sources the more the number of sources for a subject the more problems you'll face 
So the number of sources have to be limited. The revision part has to be as many times as possible. Eki book padho, das bar padho. You have 10 books and you have studied just once, it doesn't work out that way. Right? So it sort of creates a mental imagery, if you ask me. If you have studied the same book 10 times, you have that mental image of that particular page. At some point, if you forget something, if you try to recall, the entire page appears in front of your eyes. That doesn't happen if you have studied from 10 books. It's impossible, isn't it? So, your brain is not trained that way. It cannot be trained that way. And also, per subject, this book. Just imagine, how many subjects do you have? So, into 10. That's a lot of books, right? So, yehi pe hai. Oh, jo efforts concentrate karna hai, you have to concentrate the efforts in such a way that with minimum resources. Minimum resources say you have to gain the maximum output. Okay? <coughs> so that's about the current affairs part. I have a question. coming to from standard surely start. I'll come down. Okay. Okay. I'll come there. I'll come there. When we come to the book sources for various subjects, I'll come there. Okay. <coughs> Coming to the syllabus part, what do you have on your plate when you start preparation for this examination? We'll approach this examination not as three different parts, right? You have three different parts in this examination. The first part, prelims examination. The second part is your means and the third part is your interview. Understand this, there is no shortcut to get through this examination without studying. And I'll tell you up front that after two to three months of preparation, you'll feel like you know nothing. After, let's say, six months of preparation, if you're consistent enough, you'll feel like, okay, I know something, right? So after, let's say, 10 to 12 months of preparation, when you kind of get close to the heels of the examination, a feeling starts ki hoga ki nahi. right that feeling sets in for every person it's just that you have to have that cool head right you have to have that cool head so this feeling which comes first after two to three months what is that feeling you know nothing you have progressed in no way right if you become a victim of that feeling, there is no way you are going to continue with your preparation. Trust me, you can't. Right? That's when you drop preparing. Right? So that should not happen. So this is the problem which is faced by most of the people. So when you look at the classrooms, most of the times, any institute, any leading institute you take, go there, Look at the class strength in the first month, right? Look at the class strength, the class strength after three months. The attrition rate is as high as 50 to 60 percent. Q and Q? They lose hope in themselves. They lose that hope. Confidence nahi hota, right? So you have to write it on a piece of paper and stick it. You know, wherever you spend most of the time, that you can do it. Until and unless, you know, you ingrain this thing in your minds, and remember that, two to three months, right? If you are able to surpass those two to three months and prevail over that feeling, for sure, you know, you will come out with flying colors. Otherwise, it becomes really, really difficult, right? That two to three months, it's very, very important. Dusra feeling jo after six months, right? That you know something. That's a good feeling. If you have to get there, you have to, you know, surpass this feeling, right? And the last one, whether I'll get through or not, when you're close to the heels of the examination, that doesn't matter much. Invariably, you're going to write the exam, right? Why? Because you have prepared for one year, you're going to write that. Then comes your cool-headedness, right? So, First two to three months, keep this in mind. There will be a feeling that you're not progressing and you know nothing, right? You have to surpass that feeling. 
Okay? Right. <coughs> Syllabus part. So we approach not in blocks, right? Separate parts, not as disparate parts. We approach it as a single part, right? It's a single examination. So there is no way you can clear prelims this time and clear means next time, right? You went to the interview, obviously, you know, if you don't clear it, you have to come back to prelims again, right? So that is why the pro process is rigorous, right? And uh, for this reason, I keep on saying, first attempt is always the best attempt, right? First attempt is always the best attempt. Put in maximum efforts, okay? So, <coughs> the syllabus part, first, the history. You have paper one and paper two in your prelims examination, isn't it? So prelims examination is for 400 marks, right? So <coughs> filling in the application form and uh, how to do it and that stuff is for the later days, right? If you have doubts at that point in time, We'll have some 30 minute session, you know, uh, before the filling of, of the, you know, uh, the entire form and uh, we'll see to it that you fill it rather easily. Uh, there should n not be any hackles when it, when it comes to filling the form. So, paper one and paper two. So, in paper one, you have the general studies. And remember, this exam is called what? CSAT. Most of the people say CSAT is paper 2, isn't it? What? CSAT is the name of the entire prelims examination. So, CSAT is the name of the entire prelims examination. Civil Services Aptitude Test. Okay? You have two papers in this. So, CSAT paper 1 and paper 2. So, what does paper 1 involved. So have you gone through the syllabus? Yeah? So paper 1 is about general studies. Paper 2 is about your aptitude. So especially your math. Then hmm, reasoning. Hmm, and what else? Yeah. Uh, your uh, English comprehension. Right? So this is what your paper 2 is about. So you have data interpretation and all that stuff in paper 2. So this is for 200 marks and this is for 200 marks, isn't it? So earlier the pattern was so that out of 400, you have to secure the maximum marks possible. Right? For now, they have changed this have to score the maximum out of 200. What about the second paper then? It's just qualifying in nature. How much do you need to score? 66, 67. That's all you need to score. Right? So, not a difficult task. However, uh, UPSC does not let people off the hook so easily. So, why did they make this change? So, this was something which was introduced very recently. So, the paper 2. So what happened is, uh, you know, there were widespread protests by certain groups of students claiming that this paper is rather skewed because out of 400 they are selecting the people, right? So earlier, they used to select based on 400. So people used to do really well in this paper too. People used to score 190, 180 out of 200. And in this one, 50, 60 and they used to get through easily. So what is important for a civil servant? Probably GS is more important, isn't it? So what people used to do? You know, those people coming from IITs, you know, and you know, the best of engineering, you know, uh, institutes, they used to score very well. And also those people who are good at math, right, they used to score very well in this part. And they used to get through rather easily. So other people from arts background, other people from you know various other walks, they came on streets and they protested and caused UPSC to roll back these changes. And what they did was, AOF is paper co just for eligible cri eligibility criterion. It was considered. Now it is only for 66. So.
So I told you that UPSC does not let people off books so easy. So when the change was made, earlier this paper was rather simple if you ask me. Now they have made it a bit difficult. English ka standard jo tha, earlier they used to give one passage, uske upar they used to ask three questions. Now, itna bada passage ho tha hai, us pe ek hi question hoga. Many people who are scoring like 110, 120 in this paper, today are finding it difficult to score 66. Right? So, paper difficult bana diya. Jo, just you need to score 66, right? Usko bhi difficult bana diya. Kyo? You know, it is getting back at those people who protested probably. Wo abhi mind mein rakha hai UPSC. So, for this reason, you have to be a bit careful here. Right? So, not much needs to be done here. Last seven years ka papers, six, seven years ka papers, if you are able to solve and get somewhere around 120, 130. Aram se ho Paper 2. 120 in paper 2. So, if you are scoring 120, you are in a very comfortable position. Right? So, 66 lana hai, you are scoring 120. 100, 110 ke pass bhi hai to, there is not much of a problem. If you are hovering around, let's say 80, then you have to think twice. Right? So, for this reason, this paper becomes important. Just for the eligibility part. Coming to paper 1. What do you have in paper 1? History is one part. History and art and culture. Isn't it? History here you have ancient, medieval, modern, right? And art and culture. Right? History part. And when it, connect, when it comes to geography, so what are the book sources for history first? Book sources, yeah. I think uh, the book sources are mentioned there. However, I'll give you a rather, you know, a smaller list of books you need to go through. NCRTs are compulsory. From what class? From class 6. Right? From class 6. It's not from class 11 and class 12, it's from class 6. Why I say so? There are some minute details which you miss out when it comes to class 11, class 12. Right? Jo box items hota hai. There are small boxes given in your NCRT which are very interactive. Waha pe ye hoga, bolu hoga, wo hoga. You know, small kids talking about something. So it's very interactive. Right? And uh, at any point in time you feel like, you know, uh, Aapka pride, aapke preparation ke stage mein, if it comes as a confrontation, right, if it challenges you. My, what the hell am I doing? I am preparing for civil services and I am reading a 6th standard book. Aisa ho jata, na? You feel that sometimes. So, now you have to be shamed. Now you have to be shamed somehow. Then only you will start reading. Right? Kuch mat karo. Oh, 6th standard book hai, na? Usme, go to the end of the chapter. There will be questions. Try to answer them. So, if you are able to answer, well and good, skip the chapter. If you are not able to answer, so, you will be feeling a bit ashamed and you are, not, you are going to start studying again. Right? So, this you have to do for from 6th standard. Why? There are certain box items where they pick the questions directly. Right? I am talking about all the NCRT books for that matter. Right? So, history ke liye from class 6. Right? Go through from class 6. We have this ancient history, medieval, right? And modern. Apart from this, so you have your world history as well in your what? Mains examination. We will come to the mains examination later. So, ancient ke liye kaha se padna hai? Obviously, you have to study NCRTs. Apart from that, apka jo Tamil Nadu history book hai. For ancient and medieval. You have this Tamil Nadu history books. Class 11. Ka. Class, ele class 11, Tamil Nadu, state government ka. Right? You have a book. From that source, you have to study ancient and medieval. Right? For modern history, apart from NCRTs, 
Most of the people used to study Bipan Chandra earlier, right? But I would say go through spectrum, comprehensive spectrum, not the brief spectrum. Go through comprehensive spectrum, because it does not leave out on details. The details are not left out in this book. <laughs> Yes, okay. ancient and medieval, don't know. Only 11th standard. Yes, only 11th standard. Only 11th standard. In 12th, you have the modern part. That's not required. Okay, the you know wonderful thing about this comprehensive spectrum work is that it's a concoction of you know three to four books. You have Vipan Chandra in that, right? You have Sumit Sarkar in that. There is also a good big, a good book written. Uh, written. And uh, Vandopadhyay, Plaza to Partition. So these three books put together is your modern, that is comprehensive, comprehensive history, spectrum publication, right? So that is for history part, geography part. What about the geography part? When it comes to geography, you have Indian geography, physical geography, right? So world geography and physical geography. This is what you have. You have the human geography and all this stuff. There is no need to wander anywhere. Not even a single book you require apart from class 6 to class 4 the NCRT. Just the NCRTs. There is no other book required for you. Just the NCRTs. Okay? Right. What about economy? Indian economy. Remember it is Indian economy. It's not economics. Right? What we have is just Indian economy. So we talk about the macroeconomic you know, things that happen. We do not delve into microeconomics. So it's fairly simpler for that reason. So when it comes to Indian economy, there's this NCRT book, Class 12. Class 12 NCRT book by name macroeconomics in this book you have to be rather specific when you study the language used in this book is quite complicated and the text is something which is rather distorted uh, sometimes if you look at the book for a continuous period of let's say two hours uh, you feel like you have dyslexia probably <laughs> right uh, it becomes difficult for you to read that book so uh, what I will be doing I will be dealing with economy right Indian economy so by the way my name is Sagar I forgot to tell you okay uh, so I'll be dealing with Indian economy <clears throat> so I'll be telling you what to you know look out for in these books right so you have a lot of examples here a lot of calculations all those things are not required calculations are not required right we just need the aspects and the concepts in this paper right so Indian economy ka A ek source hai and I'll be giving you a notes, right? So notes, that is not the one you write down here. You'll be writing down something here, obviously. And I'll be giving you a printed material as well. So that would be more than sufficient for your preparation, right? Class 12 and notes, that is more than sufficient. So in your notes, you'll have certain points taken from NCRT, you know, certain chapters from various other books, right? Internet. So it's a, a mix of all the things. So you have a plethora of data which is required for your examination. So that's more than sufficient. Okay. What else is left? Environment. What about this? We get the notes here. Just go through the notes. Put on notes. The problem with this subject is you do not have a proper reliable source for this. In CRTs, may you have the geography book, right? Class six to class twelve. When you start uh, studying from class eight, from class eight onwards, in the end you have two to three chapters dedicated for environment, mm -hmm. right? So. That is one part. Apart from that, you get the notes. Right? That is more than sufficient. Okay? 
this is if you still have time if you still have time so if aapko zyada padhna hai you can go for igno igno ka environment pe there'll be modules you can go through them as well right if you want to i think there is no need to go through it okay so what the question so this materials uh, <coughs> listed are specific to prelims ah this is specific to prelims i'll come to the mains part later right it is pretty much the same so mains as well there'll be a few additions very few additions in cert mein as i said there is a there is no dedicated book for environment geography mein from class 8 onwards the last two to three chapters are dedicated to environment so that's about it. okay which other subject do you have is that you have gone through the syllabus to so, bolo general science what about general science what do you have here physics chemistry and biology right you have physics chemistry and biology here what to do about it there's not much you need to do about it ab school time mein acche padhe to there's no need of you know going through these books again so again class 6 to class 10 this is all they ask science books in cert class 6 to class 10 physics chemistry and biology tinon ka ek hi book mein aata hai waise bhi isn't it only after 10th you get you know separate books right so if you want to study about biotechnology biotechnology is one part right they ask few questions on so wo aapko aa jayega class 12 biology book mein towards the end right class 12 biology book towards the end you have something related to biotechnology so that part you can study right so this is about general science and uh, moreover uh, there is no guarantee that if you wrote memorize stuff in these books you will be able to answer they do not ask questions directly it is completely applied ye jo general science ke questions hota hai it is completely applied right so sometimes they ask the questions on you know uh, how uh, you know ball bearing works on what basis does it work right capillary action kya hota hai so they give you four you know items and uh, you have to choose where capillary action is taking place so this is completely applied right so if you are studying these books class 6 to class 10 and you are thinking about it while you study and concentrating not looking at some other things while you are studying probably you will be able to answer it's quite easier then. okay what about the next part oh god i forgot on that so indian polity For this, you have a sort of Bible, right? So written by Lakshmi Kant. So it's a sort of Bible. You need not ponder anywhere at all. So you need not wonder at all. Eki book hai, eki book shows hai. So if you are thorough with this book, it's fine. However, to gain the broader understanding of the concepts, for example, democracy is a concept, right? So or secularism is a concept, right? If you want to really know these concepts. it's important for you to just read through just read through i need not make notes just read through the ncrts aapka jo hai social and political life 1 2 3 so social and political life 1 2 3 starts from class 7 right so that social and political life 1 2 3 apart from that indian constitution at work right So these are the books you have from class seven to class twelve related to polity, social and political life, and then Indian Constitution at work, right? These books, if you go through them, you can gain a broader understanding of the concepts. Just like what is democracy for you? What do you say? What is democracy? By the people, for the people, of the people, right? Anything else you can say about it? Universal power is exercised by the people. Power is exercised by the people. Universal adult suffrage. Ah, uh, okay. Universal adult suffrage. It's a it's a codified under the constitution. Okay, so it's something which is given by the constitution. Yeah. Okay. Non-religious. So if there is no constitution, there cannot be democracy, is it? No, no, no. Hmm. Ah. See, the concept of democracy is something which is very very broad. It's rather broad. 
It's just about, you know, uh, paying attention to the voices. Each and every voice. Paying attention to each and every voice. Every voice has to be heard. Right? That's the, you know, fundamental nature about democracy. So it's not something just about people. It's also about nations. For example, you have institutions like UN, United Nations, where you have a lot of countries who are just like citizens there. A country is a citizen in UN, isn't it? If India's voice is not being heard, it's not a democratic institution, obviously, isn't it? So anywhere you take, be it in terms of institutions, be it in terms of individuals, be it in terms of groups, democracy is at play, right? So democracy is a very, very wide concept where, you know, a person's voice or an institution's voice or a nation's voice is being heard or not, right? So that's democracy. So you get a broader picture of such concepts. Secularism, kya hota hai? Secularism is something, what is secularism, by the way? Not religious. Okay, N not religious. So you are saying that no religion at all? No, uh, inclusive, not related to religious. Okay, not discriminating on the basis of religion, isn't it? So actual secularism meaning ki the state, the government, right? Uh, we call it nation is called a state generally. So the state has to be separate from religion, right? So that's secularism. Okay, but you cannot be so. Instead, we can say this. Do not discriminate on the basis of religion. Right? That's secularism. Indian version of secularism actually. Right? That's the Indian version of secularism. So such aspects you can understand in a better way when you go through these books. So Isme, what is required for the examination is given. Whatever is required for the examination is given. Okay? It enhances the understanding of the concepts. It really enhances. Right? Uh, class 7 to class 12. Right? Indian polity related books. Okay? Next. What's next? Is that all? DGS? Science and technology here? What about science and technology? Uh, science and technology ke mein toh, uh, earlier it was very difficult for people to pinpoint where the questions came from right so even now UPSC has the questions from Wikipedia mm -hmm. right I saw so if laser is in news laser technology <coughs> is in news Wikipedia open uh, page open karte hai wo log, and uh, they you know scroll down some 10 pages which may char punch line milega Usi ko question bana ke de de ge. So now it becomes really difficult to tackle this part. So for this reason, what you should do is just go through the science and tech, you know, things which are mentioned in your current affairs. Just go through them properly. Whenever we give the current affairs, right, uska backgrounder bhi dete hai. We also give the backgrounder. So if we are talking about a technology, so we are talking about let's say Agni missile right we also talk about your integrated missile development program which is related to it right we give a background to it so you just don't study about Agni missile uska background are we right that also will be given so if you are going through the current affairs rather regularly and properly I don't think you need to worry much about it you can never be 100% in this part and, and for that matter you cannot be 100% about any of the subjects. Keep that in mind, right? So you will be making mistakes but uh, that should be taken in stride. Humans here, we are humans. So if you are not making a mistake, you have to doubt yourself. Okay, next, science. Uh, current affairs, I would say start from the month of June. Right, start from the month of June and uh, become religious and meticulous about current affairs from the month of September. Understood? You have to be precise about current affairs from the month of September. But you have to cultivate the habit of going through current affairs from the month of June itself. Right? So, just keep on going through the current affairs for now. You cultivate the habit of going through current affairs. 
it'll be a solid backgrounder for you and from september become meticulous go into the specifics go into the specific details for, okay uh, current will be Ojana, and what will be given here and the news analysis three things you have three things right okay so this is science hmm? current affairs of all these uh, whatever topics we or like yeah current affairs of all these things so you get current affairs in this mostly you get current affairs in this one you get current affairs not here here right and current affairs of this so current affairs ka actual you know delineation can be done when we take up the main syllabus okay it can be broken down there properly so current affairs ka don't worry much jo yaha pe padhaya jayega there is your daily news analysis uske sath daily handouts will be given that is pdfs will be sent and uh, at the end of the week compilation of those pdfs right so daily news analysis with compiled pdf and then you have the yojana if you are meticulous about it from the month of september it's a lot of stuff in a month it will run into a minimum of 120 pages the current affairs just imagine that september october november december january february march april may kitna months were 9 months 900 and maybe 1000 pages let's say 1000 pages of current affairs not a small thing should we make notes of current affairs or hand out some not required what i would say is instead of making notes practice whenever you study something have a piece of paper and pen with you always right so when you go through a current affair there'll be some you know key words you just have to write those key words somewhere just keep scribbling just do not do not read through it right you'll forget trust me you'll forget जब भी आपको नोट्स मिलेंगे वेन एवर यू गेट द नोट्स ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड वी जनरली गिव सम स्पेस राइट सो दिस इज दिस विल बी द ले आउट सो हियर यू हैव द नोट्स एंड हियर हियर यू हैव द स्पेस से यू हैव अ कॉन्सेप्ट हियर यू आर स्टडिंग दैट कॉन्सेप्ट वेल यू आर स्टडिंग दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यू स्क्रिपल समथिंग हियर मेक अ ब्लॉक डायग्राम मे बी वेन यू मेक दिस ब्लॉक डायग्राम एंड नेक्स्ट टाइम वेन यू आर रिवाइज इट ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज गो थ्रू द ब्लॉक डायग्राम right and remember when you have scribbled and when you look at that scribbled thing you remember things better the printed stuff you can't remember too much from it why ye jo hai this is this will be stored as an image ye jo hai confuse ho jata hai aapka brain because all the letters look the same right monotonous hai this is something you have created you'll remember better keep this in mind whenever you are studying anything at all do scribble something right do write something at all otherwise you become inactive also ek page pada boring right so this happens with history however we'll make sure that you know history is not so boring right okay what about sociology topics the sociology it's not there in paper one right not in prelims it's not in prelims okay this is about your prelims part all these things will be taught in the class or we have to do it separately which one these ncert books ncert books uh, what we'll be doing is we'll pick up those topics which are very very important and we'll be covering it right and those topics which are not so important or so as to say easy to understand that will be left for you right so all the things which are required for the examination will be done all the concepts will be taught all the concepts if there is a concept left out right and you go through the books when you find a concept left out you can come back here and ask the pertaining lecturer to complete the topic there is no problem with that right so not an issue at all you have to get our own books which one all these all books all right these books. yeah obviously right just to, you know uh, wherever i have mentioned notes right that will be provided to you okay so you have this bunchangri you have the ncert also i told you right so 
uh, you have that office, Banshang Bing, in CRD office, uh, so you can find it there. I have seen some local bookstores mm -hmm. also. But you do not find the full set. That's the problem. You find one book and you don't find the other in local bookstores. Okay. But one visit, but with one visit to NCRT, you can find almost all the books. How is the best time to go? Yeah. To so the academic year is starting. Probably they will have almost all the books now. Can we so get it online? you can get it online. You can get it online in the sense digital copy. You can download and uh, study from the you know uh, screens, computer screens. But I would suggest have a hard copy. And one more thing. Uh, there are some things in the NCRTs where uh, you can't remember, right? Also, as to say, which require revision. Uh, say, let's say all books put together, it comes to around 20, 25 books in CRTs which you need to study. Uh, it becomes difficult for you to go through the 25 books after you have completed NCRTs. Revise karne ke liye. There are certain things which are important in those books, but if you want to revise, you have to go through the 25 books. So that's a pretty difficult task. So what I would say is, prepare a personal notes, right? When you are going through the NCRTs, if you go through the entire NCRT book, geography ke liye mat karo, right? Geography ke liye mat karo, history ke liye mat karo. So other books, let's say, social and political life. Isme there are you know certain box items. When you are going through the box items, if you feel that it is important, right? And if you feel like you are going to forget it, just make a note of it. So that next time you need not open the NCRT books, right? Rather you can just go through the notes, okay? So that, that thing would be better, if you ask me. So going through the same 25 books again, it takes a lot of time, right? Okay, and that's about, your paper one. Now, prelims to kadam hua. What is the cutoff? Cutoff kitna hoga? So this time, yeah, uh, this time it was around 106. 106 points something, right? So can you expect the cutoff be to, uh, to be around the same point? Last year it was 116, by the way. So last year it was 116, this time it is 106. So that's mark a difference. So what is the safe zone? This is the safe zone. That is the safe zone. If you are going through the sources I have mentioned, alongside if you are consistent, right? Hard work to chodo. It doesn't matter how many hours you are putting in. It doesn't matter. It only matters how many effort, effective hours you are putting in. Right? Only that matters. You have to be consistent. Do not give breaks in your preparation. That is to say, you started preparing from tomorrow and uh, three days into preparation, you feel like I have studied a lot. It's time to take a break. You took a break of three days and after that you start and it feels like a new day because it is a new day because you have forgotten everything. Right? So, for that reason, what should you be doing? Do not give too many breaks. So as to speak, start and I would say take one day break in the week. Seven days may ek din ka break banta hai. Right? You can take that one day. So that you can do, not more than that. Please not more, more than that. Okay? On that day as well, whenever you take a break, you have to go through the current affairs. Remember that part. Okay? So that's not effectively a break. Okay, and do not leave, do not postpone things, do not postpone things, set the targets to complete something and set targets which are practical, impractical targets must set. Jaisi ki I am going to complete the quality book in two days, history in three days, it's highly impractical. Hamara jo ye hota hai na, we overestimate our capabilities most of the times, right? It happens with everyone, right? Without that, probably people would not survive. So we have, you know, too much of self-confidence. So you have to tone down that a bit. And uh, I would say set practical targets. Go slow, 
and when you complete a concept make sure that there is no stone uh, stone unturned in that concept it becomes really difficult otherwise concept khatam karo aisa khatam karo ki next time just by listening to that concept neem you are able to you know recall everything related to that concept it takes time the first time right it takes time the first time but you will be sure about the concept you will be thorough with the concept so just for the sake of completion you are doing it that's not worth it right so it's a uh, you know you'll be losing a lot of energy and time right okay this is about your pig one so cut off 106 se 116 safe zone 120 plus hmm Okay, now uh, past papers go as I said. Uh, it would be better for you to go through the previous year questions before the start of the chapter. That's one. And uh, after two to three chapters, you'll have a class test, right? You'll have a class test related to those chapters, right? So questions related to both your prelims and mains will be included there. So. by the end of the completion by the time we complete your syllabus it will be somewhere around next year february or march right by then entire syllabus will be complete so by that time you will have a lot many class tests after that you will only have the test part remaining for the entire year only the test the remaining 3 months starting from february february march Three months, you'll have tests only related to prelims. After your prelims examination, you'll have tests only related to your mains examination, and you'll have, you know, your revision classes interspersed. In between, you'll have the revision classes related to the subjects. Okay? Why? Because you get these, you know, certain uh, important books out. Publications will be out only in the month of February. जैसे कि आपका इंडिया ईयर बुक है, इकोनॉमिक सर्वे है. right so these books come out budget so these come out only in the month of february so once we take these things up we'll revise the stuff related to that subject as well at the same point in time okay so there'll be revisions as well as tests after the month of february okay <coughs> so includes the optional syllabus which one i mean the completion of syllabus yes yes the it includes the optional we'll come to the optional I and mean, when we take up the mains we'll come to the optional so one one last question so how you want us to follow in the sense of was a um, social and political life for right? example mm -hmm. so when this topic is taken here mm -hmm. we would be advised to uh, to go through the seventh and eighth uh, and see it will not be advised but you should be taking it as something which is given already why because we are telling it now Uh, you should make sure that you complete these books right mm -hmm. see uh, you have to plan your study kya yeah, you have the you know class today let's say of polity there is a particular chapter going on sure. president ka chapter chal raha hai <coughs> sir taught about president you have some notes made go through the notes right and open the book related to your you know uh, polity that is lakshmikan president ka chapter hota hai Go to the president's chapter. Done. उसके बाद आज के दिन पॉलिटी हुआ है. So open the social and political life book. जितना भी हो सके उतना कदम करो. These things go faster. Okay. These things go really really fast. क्योंकि language simple है, right? Class nine, class ten का. You understand it better. Very interactive. So these things go fast. The thing is. you have to complete these things they do ncrt is that i would suggest you to complete it by the uh, you know by two and a half three months within ah uh, all the ncrt books just the ncrt books it's not like you don't understand stuff in this you understand almost everything hamara ye plan hai ki we start with the fundamentals itself so our focus hoga we complete this this and then this this part and later this part these are the five core subjects these we are going to complete first thing we are going to do this so accordingly you keep on tracking the ncrt books right uske baad jo bhi bacha hai ncrt general science jo hai baad mein le ja karo 
यू कैन डिग्रेड ऑफ लीटर इट सो पहले ए वाला खत्म करो ओके राइट अंडरस्टैंड जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड स्टफ एंड लिव इट देर डोंट बाय हार्ट एनी थिंग इफ द नीड बी इफ यू फील लाइक यू फॉर गेट समथिंग मेक अ नोट ऑफ इट दैट्स अबाउट इट ओके नेक्स्ट मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन का सो कट ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी है राइट रिमेम्बर कट ऑफ इज वन ट्वेंटी इट्स नॉट वन ऑट सिक्स इट्स वन ट्वेंटी एंड इट्स नॉट डिफिकल्ट टू गेट दिस मार्क get up to this mark uh, so uh, people uh, keep on saying that 120 is too high a cut off right trust me if you are you know uh, religious and if you are uh, rather consistent in your preparation 120 is not a big task right there's a person uh, who was writing the exam this year that person wrote the exam last year <coughs> and uh, his Scored a meager forty-five in paper one, right? So after that, we just told him what to be, what is to be done, right? So just the things I told you, how to go about it. And today uh, he is topping here. But when it comes to the test, he tops here. He scores around one forty-five. This is astounding, if you ask me. 145 is too good a score, and when it comes to his favorite subject, his favorite subject is history. Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, right? <laughs> so his score is going up or up, it goes to 170s, right? He is, you know, outstanding when it comes to history. So 1 120 should not be an issue, provided you know you are just following the schedule and strategy you have. Okay, right? Okay. Now that the prelims is done, you have four months for the preparation of your mains examination. When you say the strategy, meaning like what are the things? Like, I know it's in the study phase, but what are the things we have to consider? The first thing, <coughs> the way you study stuff, right? The way you study stuff. That is to say. Are you going to do it uh, on the basis of per subject at a time, or that is per subject per day, or is it going to be two to three subjects per day? That is one thing. So spacing the subjects, right? Spacing your learning. So that is one thing. The other thing is time, time allocation. This is the second important thing. As I said, it doesn't matter how much, how many hours you are spending. right all that matters is how many effective hours and also i would not ask you to study at a particular point in time in a day right there are some people who are night people there are some people who are day people right some people feel comfortable if they are studying till 2 o'clock there are some people who study you know till say 10 uske baad nobody can stop them right there is sleep will take over right so it's like they are haunted in some way right so time ka time it's about it's all about how many effective hours right uh, on an average if you ask me per day apart from class you should be availing yourself at least 4 hours for now apart from class 4 hours right करंट अफेयर्स उसके बाद जो नोट्स है ये सब मिला के फोर आवर्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम क्लास राइट फॉर नाउ इट्स नॉट एन इजी थिंग फोर आवर्स इज नॉट एजी थिंग आई एम नॉट सेइंग इट्स इजी आपको लगता है कि इजी है बट फोर आवर्स इज अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम आई एम स्पीकिंग अबाउट इफेक्टिव आवर्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक फोर आवर्स इफेक्टिव टाइम यू शुड बी स्पेंडिंग अ मिनिमम ऑफ सिक्स एंड हाफ आवर्स इफ यू आर राइट सो अभी स्टार्टिंग है ना स्टार्टिंग है इसलिए So six hours. Why six hours? Why six hours? You started studying. Uh, at what time did you start studying? You say I started at six. Sir, at what time did you end? Twelve o'clock. Oh, great! You studied for six hours. Which may breaks? 
किसी ने बुला है चाय के लिए यू हेड स्टडीड फोर्टी मिनट्स यू वेंट फॉर टी इट टू वन आर पता ही नहीं चला सर कब हुआ टाइम कब हुआ इज एंड दिस हैपन्स दिस हैपन्स सो यू हैव टू कल्टिवेट दिस हैबिट ऑफ यू नो सिटिंग डाउन फॉर फोर आवर्स मिनिमम ऑफ फोर आवर्स एंड स्पेंडिंग you know or uh, you know rather good way for us so and uh, give breaks every 45 minutes 45 40 minutes right give a break of 5 minutes at least or oh, why because uh, you were neurons start stop firing at a brisk pace after 45 you know 50 minutes so you will not be able to grasp as many things as you did at the starting so give a 5 minute break don't study think of something else maybe right or go out have a tea or do something for those 5 minutes after that you start studying so 40 to 45 minutes every 40 to 45 minutes take a break the break should be only for the span of 5 minutes remember that so 40 minutes pada you feel like you have achieved a lot and now take a break of 1 hour right so padhne ke baad ye lagta hai you know you feel that because you know you have strained your brain and you feel that oh great 40 minutes 45 minutes so you have to cultivate this habit okay and the third thing is about strategy uh, i have not taken up the you know uh, was that optional part that is why i did not mention optional ke liye kitna time spend karna hai aur iske liye kitna time spend karna hai that is the regular preparation gs part how much time you should spend <coughs> optional i will say for now right for now in the starting starting phase because your optional is not started yet, there is no need for you to dedicate any time to it per se after let's say once we start the optionals right we had to divide it exactly halfway half the time for your gs preparation half the time for your optional preparation for the number of days optional goes on if the optional takes 2 and a half months on 2 and a half months mein half the time you must be spending on on optional half the time on gs right so that's what you need to do with the optional optional itna important kyun hai we'll see we'll see in the later part okay so no no this optional is different means mein aata hai i'll take it up now okay this is different okay this is your prelims and the strategy we'll go for the mains now mains ka cutoffs guys are mains ka you know which are the important subjects you need to concentrate on is there a way to select an optional or choose an optional has anyone already decided what the optional is for you guys have you decided the, your optional i had the psychology in my mind now okay psychology public administration public administration nothing yet nothing yet nothing nothing what are the subjects history and politics and give the list don't worry uh history and politics history or politics okay let's see ha huh? haven't decided not decided public administration public administration uh, anything related to history anything related yeah, to history no idea okay not decided not decided, not decided. yourself no not decided ha huh? i don't know the question okay not decided no okay great uh, that that's a better position to be in if you ask me <laughs> right okay means means may you have how many papers with in the papers nine papers you have nine papers this is completely subject aapka jo prelims papers tha paper 1 and paper 2 those are objective nature right so which carry a negative marking of 1/3 right one third negative marking over for every wrong you make one third of the marks will be cut so paper 1 you will have 100 questions paper 2 you have either 100 questions or 80 questions 80 questions bana to har ek question ka two and a half marks hoga mm-hmm. right so paper 1 mein you will have a standard 100 question har ek question ke liye do marks hoga 
सो नेगेटिव मार्किंग फर्स्ट पेपर में कितना होगा फॉर एवरी रॉन्ग यू मेक देर बी पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन सिक्स सिक्स सेवन मार्क्स कट इन पेपर टू इफ इट इज फॉर एटी क्वेश्चन टू एंड हाफ मार्क्स इच हाउ मच विल बी कट पॉइंट एट मार्क्स पर रॉन्ग राइट तो यू गेन अ लॉट एंड ऑल्सो लूज अ लॉट इन पेपर टू राइट सो वैसे भी सिक्सटी सिक्स ही लाना है नॉट मच ओके मेन्स फर्स्ट पेपर इज योर इंग्लिश पेपर राइट इंग्लिश कितने मार्क्स के लिए होगा 300 मार्क्स के लिए होगा एंड इट विल बी वेरी वेरी जनरलिस्टिक इन नेचर ऑल यू नीड टू स्कोर इज हाउ मच कितना पांच मार्क्स से भी कम स्कोर करना है 25 पांच मार्क्स आउट ऑफ 300 यू मस्ट बी स्कोरिंग हाउ मच 75 ऑल यू नीड टू स्कोर इज 75 आई डोंट थिंक इट वुड बी डिफिकल्ट क्या होगा इसमें ऐसे होगा राइट जनरल टॉपिक्स पे ऐसे होगा सो इफ यू हैव क्वालिफाइड एंड इफ यू आर राइटिंग मींस एग्जामिनेशन ऑब्वियसली यू विल हैव द कीप ऑन ऑलमोस्ट एवरी टॉपिक दे पुट हियर राइट सो ऐसे होगा कॉम्प्रेंशन होगा फिर से देर गिव यू पैसेज उसके बाद नो यू हैव क्वेश्चन फॉलोइंग दैट ऑप्शन नहीं होगा वैसे भी यू हैव टू राइट समथिंग राइट एंड देन ग्रामर पे क्वेश्चन नहीं होगा राइट प्रीसीज राइटिंग होगा दैट वन इज वंडरफुल प्रीसीज राइटिंग सो वट इज प्रीसीज राइटिंग यू मस्ट बी नोइंग इट ऑलरेडी दे गिव अ बिग पैसेज मेक अ स्मॉलर पैसेज एंड देर बी ट्रांसलेशन इंग्लिश टू योर मदर टंग राइट so such translations might be there or might not be there in this paper right the second paper is your <coughs> regional language or mother tongue so regional language koi bhi language you can choose even if you are from a different state and there that language is not spoken at all yet you can choose any of the languages listed in your schedule there is Indian Constitution में language का schedule है so whichever languages are there are 22 languages you can choose any of the language right so that's not a problem तो here again 300 marks का होगा all you need to score is 25 percent यहाँ पे there will be translation for sure they give a English passage convert it into your mother tongue they give a you know mother tongue passage you have to convert it into English यहाँ पे थोड़ा सा मुश्किल होगा इट विल बी फॉर नोज जैसे कि दे गिव ट्रांसिस्टर्स हाउ डू यू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू योर मदर टंग मदर टंग जस्ट राइट ट्रांसिस्टर इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज राइट सो स्पेलिंग ठीक से लिखना राइट सो इट शुड नॉट बी समथिंग एल्स इज एंड सो दिस इज नॉट अ डिफिकल्ट टास्क दे विल बी पीपल हु फेस दिस प्रॉब्लम जैसे कि अ पर्सन इज फ्रॉम कर्नाटक एंड ही डजेंट नो कनाडा ओके ये ऐसा कैसा हो गया बात करता है कनाडा में लिखने ना ही डजेंट नो टू राइट वाई ही रेड इन सम आई सी एस सी सिलेबस में पढ़ा एंड वहाँ पे हिंदी था हिंदी भी ठीक से नहीं आता भूल गया क्यों ही इज नॉट इन टच विद दैट यू नो लैंग्वेज लॉन्ग हैज नॉट रिटर्न दिस प्रॉब्लम हैपन विद यू नो वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड्स so that is my that is why i am stressing this you know a particular thing he was outstanding when it comes to psychology but he was not able to even get the marks matlab he is like 7 years older to me right he was 7 years older to me and uh, you know we were preparing together so that person uh, he was outstanding in psychology uh, when he wrote his last attempt his was the last attempt and uh, it was the second attempt and the last attempt so age ka barring tha so when he wrote this exam first ex- first time he somehow cleared it by one or two marks his paper mein the next time he got one marks less and the entire marks of other papers were not given they will not give you the marks they will not correct at all right do problem hai yahan pe One problem is you do not know for the next attempt where you stand. एक problem तो एक है, 
दूसरा तो ऑब्वियस है यू डी नॉट क्वालिफाई राइट सो दैट हैपन विथ हिम एंड डू नॉट नेग्लेक्ट दिस पेपर ये पेपर तो चल जाएगा इट कैन बी डन इजिली जिसका भी यू आर नॉट इन टच विथ योर मदर टंग और एनी अदर लैंग्वेज जैसे कि आप कभी भी यू हैव नेवर रिटर्न लेट से कनाडा और तेलुगु इन योर लाइफ ऑल यू हैव डन इन योर स्कूल यू हैव रिटर्न ओनली हिंदी राइट सो एंड यू आर फ्रॉम अ सदर्न स्टेट यू हैव रिटर्न ओनली हिंदी ऑब्वियस है आप प्रॉब्लम्स फेस करोगे यू विल फेस द प्रॉब्लम्स सो प्रैक्टिस राइटिंग हिंदी में इफ यू आर फ्रॉम आई सी एस सी सिलेबस और समथिंग सो यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस यू नीड नॉट स्टार्ट इट नाउ टू अर्स लास्ट वन मंथ जब है सो देन ऑल्सो यू कैन डू एट नॉट एन इश्यू ओके राइट एंड दोज पीपल हु मेक अ लॉड ऑफ स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक्स इट सेंस ऑफ अ वेरी बैड मैसेज स्पेशली इन दिस पेपर राइट यू आर डिसरेस्पेक्टिंग अ लैंग्वेज यूर वो चल जाता है इन अदर पेपर्स यू आर राइटिंग इन लेट्स ए इंग्लिश राइट सो इंग्लिश में लिख रहे हो इफ यू मेक स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक्स इट इज अंडरस्टैंडेबल right if you are making a mistake in you know a uh, regional language jo paper correct kar raha hai wo regional person hoga usko kaisa lagega bahut bura lagega it 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 sends out a very very wrong message to him right wo jo man lag raha tha pass karne ke liye fail kar diya <laughs> right so you had to keep these things in mind okay So paper one, paper two. Now paper three. What about paper three? What do you have here? S A. S A. S A. Earlier they used to ask two S A. Sorry, one S A for two fifty marks. One S A, single S A. So four topics they used to give, and you have to choose one topic and write twenty pages. Right, eighteen to twenty pages on a single topic. I found that was rather easier. Now what they have done is they have six essays. They give six essays. Part A me three, part B me three. Out of each part, you have to choose one. So two essays written are. Abi one twenty five marks each. So if you ask me, I felt comfortable with that, the old one, eighteen twenty pages, a key topic pe written are. So that was more comfortable. Uh, i'll tell you why the reason is that you run out of ideas that is overlapping ideas do aise hai right part 1 mein ek aise hai part 2 mein ek aise hai you have written something here right part 2 mein likhna hai now the word is sort of get repeated a reason se effect hai just now you have used it that those words keep on playing in your mind तो वही आइडियाज बार बार आता रहते हैं तो तो यू रिपीट सर्टन आइडियाज किया हाउ एवर इट्स अ लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड सबके लिए यही पेपर होगा ना तो नो प्रॉब्लम सो यू हैव टू एसेस हाउ टू राइट द एसेस दिस पेपर इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज देर आर पीपल हु स्कोर थर्टी आउट ऑफ टू फिफ्टी देर आर पीपल हु स्कोर वन टू वन इन द सेम पेपर what makes them stand out right it's the structure it's not the quotes log bolte hai quotes likhe to acha marks aayega right bas quotes se marks nahi aata so what do you need to do there has to be a structure proper structure and practice so we'll guide you regarding this there will be a separate session on this there will be separate sessions and you will have tests on essay as well right so we'll be scoring your papers separately so there will be a test on that ओके A beautiful essay is the one which touches all the aspects which are there in your syllabus, right? That will be a beautiful essay. Diversity is something which they look out for in an essay. You should the person who corrects the paper should not know which your optional is when he reads the essay. 
आपने चूज किया था पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पार्ट वन में एक पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टॉपिक दिखा आपको बहुत आनंद हो गया <laughs> क्यों हमारा सब्जेक्ट क्या है ऑप्शनल तो यू हैव स्टडीड इन डेप्थ तो संतुष्ट नाउ यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग यू रोट सो मेनी थिंग्स द पर्सन हु इज करेक्टिंग द एस पेपर डज नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट यू रिटर्न क्यों वो जो करेक्ट कर रहा है बेचारा दैट पर्सन एज अ जनरलिस्ट जनरल पर्सन होगा इंग्लिश लेक्चरर होगा कोई थोड़ी ना वो बैड पढ़ाने वाला होता है है ना यू हैव रिटर्न एवरी फिलोसफी यू नो उसको पता भी नहीं होगा कौन क्या लिख रहा है ये इज इट इट दैट प्रॉब्लम विल बी दैट यू हैव टू बी वेरी 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 अबाउट दिस सिचुएशन राइट जब भी लिखते हो इससे इट हैज टू बी डाइवर्स and you should not disclose your optional in your essay paper right once you disclose usko you know kahi pe lagega usko he is trying to prove that he is more superior to me lagega ki nahi kyunki you have included a sentence which he does not understand he has to google it now problem hoga kahi nahi so it becomes problematic right so you should not put that person in that position right anyways it is a general studies paper essay is a general studies paper the answer has to be generalistic right so that's about essay part i uh, will be giving you the structure as well, how to go so the which papers will not be counted as rank no no only from the essay or from the essay part only from the essay part in dono ka 300 300 iska 250 hua hai there are minimum words we have to use in essay uh essay ka minimum maximum word limit aisa kuch nahi hai uh the thing is i would say they will give the number of papers you have to complete the essay again <laughs> right ha uh, number of papers hoga so and uh, remember for this entire thing starting from here in the front page they will have printed in block letters so that it hits your eye and the mind ki what matters is quality not quantity that will be clearly mentioned quality bahut important hai quantity is not important If you put a lot of quantity, right, it becomes tedious for the person who reads it. मैंने क्वेश्चन पूछा और एक बार in the class test, right? Uh, I am myself to blame, right? Not the students. I had not given the general guidelines how to write an answer. I just wanted to test the waters, what people will write. Uh, in the first class itself, I just gave them the question as to uh, India में industrialization ठीक से नहीं हुआ है. in india industrialization has not happened properly what can be the reasons what are the reasons for this so they had listened to the class very you know curiously and they remembered almost everything i had told in the class what they have done is when a paper be nice apply kiya they were writing in their own sheets of paper so probably they had a lot of sheets they were 10 mark ka bola tha maine right they have to restrict it for two pages right maximum is two pages oh likha hai some person had written four pages likha kya hai the entire chapter the entire chapter so the problem for me is now is not that the person has not written the answer i have to search for where the answer is that becomes the problem right maine pucha gandhi ke bare likho आपने लिखा फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल के बारे में ढूंढ लो गांधी के बारे में बीच में होगा <laughs> है ना दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम सो यू शुड नॉट पुट दोस पीपल इन दैट प्रॉब्लम राइट सो दैट्स व्हाट यू एस ए पार्ट पेपर फोर जीएस वन जीएस वन में क्या क्या होगा हिस्ट्री इन हिस्ट्री एंशियंट मिडीवल मॉडर्न and then world history art and culture right and art and culture ke liye in your paper one right that is your prelims mein and mains mein dono mein bhi ek hi book source hai <coughs> nitin singhania nitin singhania and class 11 and 12 mein ncert mein in art and culture World history, world history. 
So which is the book mentioned there? Hope it is not Norman Law. What is speaking? Not all districtly and I mentioned printed notes. Ah, printed notes. So that would be sufficient. <coughs> Problem is that the world history ka, there is a wonderful book written by Norman Law. Right? So Norman Law ka book it runs into around 500 600 pages. Right? The return on investment, the time you invest on that book, the returns are very, very less. Book is wonderful, no doubt in that. They hardly ask one or two questions. And even after studying the entire book, probably you will not be in a position to answer those particular questions which are asked. Uh, the problem is that they ask questions from, you know, Indian perspective, world history from Indian perspective. Just like one question, I stress NCRT so much for this reason itself. They had asked a question related to India's industrialization in contrast with Japan's industrialization, right? Both of us got the independence almost at the same time. But look, where is Japan now when it comes to industrialization and where is India? What actually worked for Japan and what did not work for Japan? So this is a question, right? You read the entire 500 pages, Norman Lauka, you will not be able to answer it. NCR ka class 8 wala book, Indian history ka you will be able to answer it. Because it is a box item. Hai. It's a box item. End of the chapter, somewhere they have given India's industrialization in contrast with Japan directly. Right? So, 12 marks. 10 or 12 and a half marks. So, that is why they are very, very important. So, it's like, you know, you get the answer completely right or you don't get the answer at all. Right? So, why is that? That is why NCRT is important. Okay? Okay, world is taking a walk and then Nitin Singhania that's done and class 11, 12 NCRT or uh, culture ka book hai, right? You have culture books, right? Okay, next geography, no need to study anything else. After prelims mein jo class 6 to class 12 tha, the same books here. No need of studying anything extra, right? What is next? Okay. Social aspects, right? Indian society came out. There's a book called Indian Society in your NCRT. Class in our now class 12. Indian Society ke baare mein ek book hai. Just go through that book. That's sufficient. There's no need to study anything more. It gives you the broad overview of uh, how the families work in India, how caste is in India, how religion is in India, right? So these broad aspects, it paints a broad picture of all these aspects. So you'll have a broader understanding of these aspects in Indian society. So migration kya hota hai, right? How urban people are, how rural folks are. So these things you understand, right? So just that book is sufficient for you when it comes to social aspects. Can you repeat the book? Indian society. Class 12. Class 12. And then what next? What do you have next? <coughs> hmm. Is that all? Ah, that's Indian society. Okay. Geography may that's what you have Indian geography and world geography. So that will be covered in class six to class four NC. That's more than sufficient. Okay. Next paper five. Paper 5 is GS2. Again, there was a significant overlap here. You have Indian polity and governance. Indian polity, governance, Indian constitution and uh, representation of People's Act. A server for the entire thing. The same book. Let me back. You have a book on Indian polity, you have a book on Indian governments, right? I would suggest you to buy both the books, right? Governance ke liye, it is important for your prelims also. Just go through the book, governance card. Don't buy hard stuff. It's something like you, in one reading, one or two readings, you'll be able to remember most of the stuff. 
and most of the things which are there in Indian polity, there is a you know repetition of the same thing in your Indian governance book as well, right? So efforts will be lesser when it comes to Indian governance book. This is in relation to paper three, that is governance yeah. Paper five, okay. that is GS three. Oh, sorry, GS two. It will be GS two. GS two. Yeah, it will be GS two. Like on the previous paper, uh, I just went through and I had this doubt. Uh, they said like Stalin features of Indian society, but the inside that it's mentioned about like problems. Mm -hmm. so, All those things will be covered here. Yeah. Social aspects, man. Okay. And remember, okay. your uh, position of Indian women in India, right? Uh, child marriages. These are all social aspects. On these things, you will be getting news items. Articles are there, right? On which we will be framing questions and we'll be giving what the uh, you know current affairs stuff. So you keep on going through that, and this book will be a backgrounder for you. It will just be a backgrounder. It will be including all the problems as well. Or not? Problems, problems. You are generalistic problems. Hoga. The most recent problems will be there in the current affairs. It's like you have a base, and you need to add current affairs to it. Right? So, the current affairs you need to keep on adding it over time. Right? Base to OI raiga. That thing doesn't change. You have to keep on adding the current affairs. Right? Okay. Next. <coughs> Polity, governance, Yerua, and then you have uh, your social sector schemes, policies. Right? This is something which is completely related to your current affairs. Completely related to current affairs. Jo policies are there. Only those policies which are in news, those are important. Only schemes which are coming in news, those are important. So it will be completely current affairs. No problems there. Uske baad hoga, aapka international relations. India's bilateral relations, India's multilateral relations, how it is dealing with the groups, right? Various groups in the world. So that's international real relations and diaspora. What is diaspora? People of Indian origin and Indian citizens living abroad. Right? That is Indian diaspora. So how they are contributing to Indian, uh, you know, uh, Indian's political system and economic system. So these are the things uh, which are there here. And again, this is completely current affairs based. Again, it is completely current affairs. But you need to have a base for this as well. So, do you have a book for this? There is no need for you to go through a separate book. Here you have notes. Right? If you want more, if you are very, very interested when it comes to international relations, what you can do is MEA website visit. Right? MEA website where you have different articles, different PDFs, you can just go through them. Right? But if you ask me, it would suffice for you to just go through the current affairs and this thing. And if you want to know about India's foreign policy in a rather good way, and how India has been doing over the years, Shashi Tarur ka ek book Pax Indica. This is a wonderful book on you know India's foreign relations. A wonderful book. It tells you the story of India's foreign relations since 1947, right? Why India deals with Pakistan in one way? Why does it deal with China in the other way, right? Why is India so lenient when it comes to US, right? So there are certain reasons. It is not just about you know give and take policy. It's not just about money thing. It's not just about power thing. It's also about the philosophy. It's also about the values which India stands for. Right? So how it deals with Palestine, how it deals with Israel. So this is something related to the mindset of Indian governments itself over the years. Right? So all these things will be looked into uh, in your Pax Indica. Right? So it forms a very strong base for you. Very, very strong base. Right? So you can go through that. Right. Next. This is your paper 2. Sorry. Paper 5 GS2. And next you have GS3.
इसमें क्या होगा इंडियन इकोनॉमी होगा द बुक्स विल बी द सेम इंडियन इकोनॉमी के लिए देर इज नो एडिशन राइट एंड देन यू हैव इंडस्ट्री इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एग्रीकल्चर राइट फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री इन सब के लिए द सेम सोर्सेस व्हिच वी मेंशनड अर्लियर देयर इज नो एडिशन एनवायरमेंट के लिए सेम सोर्सेस देयर इज नो एडिशन राइट सो उसके बारे में करंट अफेयर्स में आता रहेगा सो यू नीड टू ऐड दोस थिंग्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट व्हाट नेक्स्ट साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी के लिए अगेन सेम सोर्सेस देयर इज नो नीड ऑफ एडिशन एंड देन यू हैव इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी चैलेंजेस the last part internal security challenges and disaster management this is the last part of your paper <coughs> there is a book written by ashok kumar his ips this is a wonderful book right a concise book and it touches upon all the aspects related to your internal security challenges so what does it deal with internal security challenges <coughs> naxalism ke bare mein terrorism ke bare mein right and then you have uh, this uh, communal clashes going on right so all these things cyber security ke bare mein right so all these things will be covered here internal security challenges jo bhi internally सिक्योरिटी के लिए थ्रेट है फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव द नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन जहाँ पे यू हैव सर्टन ग्रुप्स यू नो कॉलिंग फॉर अ सेपरेट नेशन राइट सो दीज आर ऑल इश्यूज व्हिच नीड टू बी पेड अटेंशन टू सो दो थिंग्स विल बी कवर्ड हियर, ओके सो फॉर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दीज मेनी सब्जेक्ट्स राइट इज देर एनी सब्जेक्ट यू हैव नेवर हर्ड ऑफ इतने सारे सब्जेक्ट्स हैं Is there any subject you have never heard of? कोई ऐसा सब्जेक्ट नहीं है ना यू हैव ऑलवेज एट सम पॉइंट इन योर इन टाइम इन योर लाइफ यू हैव हर्ड ऑफ दीज सब्जेक्ट राइट एंड नाउ कम्स न्यू न्यू वर्ल्ड राइट जी एस फोर एंड यू हैव हर्ड ऑफ I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give a you know case study, sort of case study, which was asked in UPSC, anyways. So you'll understand the nature of questions they ask you. So you're uh, you're a person, you know, who has a friend, and uh, that friend of yours is sitting in the first bench, and you are sitting in the last bench. Okay, you have full view of what your friend is doing, and you are writing a test. you are writing a final examination okay to get a degree if he doesn't get degree he will be in a lot of problems he has familial problems too right he has to fend for his family coming from the coming year so you are sitting at the last he is sitting in the first bench you see that your friend is cheating in the examination what are you going to do he is a closest friend you have he is a childhood friend of yours What are you going to do? Can we take the opinions? What are you going to do? It's an ethical dilemma. It's an ethical dilemma. Uh, but but you know what are you going to do? In actual, let it be. Let it be. So you are going to just study your paper. In the paper, people are going to be more informed than this paper. Uh, so what are you going to what are people going to write people write that uh, we are going to inform the investigator on flowering but that's mm-hmm. not what people do oh, so that's not what people do right so what should you write in the examination we can advise him not to repeat survey oh you cannot shout in the examination <laughs> <laughs> like, like for the next paper na in this letter oh, do with that that is the last paper okay last <laughs> Inform the English leader. Inform the English leader. Are you going to do it? <laughs> As a civil servant, you have to. Uh, no, not as a civil servant. We are talking about the degree examination. Okay. <laughs> As a citizen, we have to. Okay. The thing is, uh, you know, 
when you take an ethical stand, uh, there will be some people who are going to get hurt. Right? Whenever, going, whenever you are going to make an ethical decision, there are going to be some people who are going to get hurt. So, in this case, your answer has to be, of course, that you are going to involve, you know, inform the invigilator. Maybe you are not going to do it in your real life, but, but at least you should have that outlook, right? Outlook towards the issues. Maybe you are not going to do it, but at least preach it. Probably, right? <laughs> Rather than preaching it, I would say maybe you are going to change yourself that way in the coming future, where you know you are going to value values more than anything else, right? At least that thought has to be there, right? So you are going to write that okay, I am going to inform the invigilator that my friend is cheating. Now you informed, so your friend is hurt. What are you going to do? You are going to lose his friendship. Right? Now, the question is, why did you do it? You felt it was wrong. It's a 10 marker question, question by the way. Not 10 marker. If I am not wrong, it is a 15 marker question. What are you going to do and why did you do it? Right? So these are the nature of questions. But don't worry. Uh, we'll try to address these such questions. So we'll train you that way. Okay. The other question. Uh, one more question. Interesting question. Uh, what is happiness? Hmm? What is happiness? Depends on each person. Depends on no. If they ask you, what are you going to write? <laughs> <laughs> That's important, right? So the question was straightforward. They asked like, define happiness. What is happiness according to you? Ten mark. Kya likhe bhai? What can we write? Isn't it? So you have to define happiness. How do you define? So these are the things you know which are very very subjective in nature. So the entire paper is like that, right? Rather fluid, very fluid. Right? In fact, it is very fluid. You can write whatever you want and get away with it. Right? Just that you have to justify your answers. Right? So, that's your paper 4. Ethics and liberty. And everybody knows what the answer should be. But the thing is, how you are going to defend your answer. Right? How you are going to defend your stand. That becomes more important. Okay? So, that's your GS4. And the final paper is your optional paper. Optional paper may you have paper one and paper two. Paper one in every subject except the literature subjects. You have literature subjects. Sorry, you have any prescribed books for ethics? Ethics ke liye there is no prescribed book. I'll give you the notes. Books are there, but I would suggest you not to go through it. Please don't. Right? They are. Uh, if I should use the word pathetic, no, but. It's beyond that, okay? Something, see, I don't understand this uh, when people put in stuff which is not required for your examination. Too much of that. So, we have to be blame the aspirants as well, some aspirants as well. Why? Because if I hand them out like 90 pages of notes, they'll say, sir, 250 marks ka paper hai. You're giving us 90 pages. How do you expect us to score you know, good marks from 90 pages. What what will I do now? Bring all the crap from the internet and throw it. Obvious, no? So, that's, that's the problem we have with most of the people. They believe that more the quantity, more we will clean. Right? Ethics paper ke liye aisa hai. There are only few concepts you need to understand. Definitions are very important hai hai. So, you understand those concepts and write anything that comes to your mind, right? It will be right. True heart set, true mind se likho, sahi hoga, right? So, write stuff which actually, you know, is something which you have understood properly, right? It is completely based on understanding, this entire paper. Subjective, it's based on understanding, right? Justification, sir. 
and then you have optional paper one and paper two. Literature subjects, eh? there are a few literature subjects. So the literature subjects have an upper hand, right, in most cases. However, you know, uh, if you're not good in handwriting, maybe, if you're not good in spellings, <coughs> if you're not good in making or framing sentences, forget about literature. It's an honest suggestion, right? Speed also matters a lot. Whenever it comes to regional languages, like Hindi is subject, you have English literature, you have uh, Tamil, you have Telugu, you have Assamese, you have a lot many, you know, options when it comes to literature. But you also have to remember, English ka baat chodo, it will be in English. But when it comes to other, you know, languages, how do you, you put that extra bit of effort while you write the language, right? I say, goal goal karke likhna hai na? So, thoda sa difficult ho, right? It'll be a bit difficult. So, speed. If you have the speed, if you're not making mistakes, if you're good at language, yes, you can go with the literature subjects. If not, you have the options wide open, right? You have the options wide open. So, paper one may now, apart from literature, in all the other optionals, you have paper one, which is the foundation, paper two, which is the application part. Uh, proposed sources, it depends. Uh, we do not give literature optional here, right? We give select optionals, right? Uh, sources, it depends on, you know, uh, where you stay. That's very important. For example, people living in Bangalore and taking Kannada optional can find a lot of sources here, right? Uh, we do not know if you have uh, qualified people giving the optional training. Uh, for other languages as well, right? We do not know that. So, some language papers have very good, you know, success rates. Other optionals, uh, that is literature optionals, do not. So, it depends completely on the interest of the person. So, if you have done your, you know, MA in literature, probably things would be really, really easier for you. It would be really, really easier, right? So, those are the factors you consider when you take literature. And then you have your other subjects. You have humanities and sciences in optionals. <coughs> Though most of the people are engineers and those people who have done BSc. So you have an inclination to choose sciences maybe, but sciences has well, sciences have a general problem. Or sciences that <coughs> math also is included, they have a general problem where you score in binaries, ones or zeros. Right? So, either you know a thing completely, then you get very good marks. You don't know the stuff, probably. You know, you will be down to the ground. So, that problem is there with your sciences. But when it comes to humanities, uh, there is wiggle room. There's a lot of wiggle room. Right? So, here, in humanities, you have sociology, anthropology, public administration, psychology right and then you have geography history right political science and then philosophy right so these are all the subjects you have you can choose any of the subject you want you want right on what basis are you going to choose an option many people say the success rate of previous years i will say no this is a wrong yardstick you are using. Uh, some say, uh, I will choose an optional based on my degree. The important thing is, did you do your degree with your coalition or because of some other reason? That is to say, was it out of your heart you chose that degree or was it because your parents pushed you to do that degree? What difference is that? Jaziki, you are an engineer, you are a mechanical engineer and you never wanted to be a mechanical engineer. So, just because you have done your mechanical degree doesn't mean that you can take optional as mechanical and do well. It's impossible. Why? Because you have not put your heart and mind there when you completed the degree. Things will not be easy for you. So, if it was out of interest you chose your degree, 
and on the same subject if you are choosing an optional things will be easier right otherwise it would be difficult so the optional subjects you have to choose it based on only interest it doesn't matter how many people got qualified last year in that particular subject it doesn't matter at all kyunki har ek subject mein ek na ek banda select hoga how did he get selected how did he get selected obvious na so it has to be something to do with the interest of the person right so only interest is what matters to choose an optional it is important because optionals mein you have to study in depth it's not like superficial study you have to study in depth you have to gain insights on each and every topic you'll gain insights only when you have interest nahi to kya karoge upar upar badh ke khatam hua bas you feel happy when you complete the you know topic aisa nahi hona chahiye you should be unsettled when you complete a topic you should have that craving to learn more about that topic so if an optional is generating that interest in you so that's the optional you should go for right so i'm not asking you to choose an optional which is provided here i'm asking you to choose an optional based on your interest always right so how many people got selected how is the performance of this optional it doesn't matter at all it doesn't matter at all commerce related no i don't have a subject related to commerce the optionals available here are uh, you have political science right and then you have public administration geography <coughs> and then you have uh, psychology right anthropology जैसे कि जोग्राफी को Uh, there are some people, uh, for example, uh, there was this person uh, who was a first ranker uh, last to last year. Uh, that lady had gone through forty books for optional, right? Geography ka, forty books, forty not small books, forty big books probably. So, and there was another person who got through, and uh, he was rank five or rank six. He had went through only seventeen or eighteen books for geography itself. It depends. right it depends so uh, for example you have an optional like uh, psychology jaha pe you need to go through only 7 to 8 books but the thing is wo oh, 7 to 8 books if you have to grasp everything in that book it takes a lot of time right so it would not be burdensome if it is out of interest that's what i want to say right if you choose an optional based on interest it will not be burdensome otherwise you have to push yourself every time every time you open the book padhna hai yaar padhna hai aisa nahi lagna chahiye you should be like this i have studied this it's interesting right okay that's about your optional so the thing is a ek subject this one and your essay paper these three together put together accounts for 1000 marks these are the three thing three or four papers which make or break the deal this is the four papers 1000 marks kyun aapka gs1 gs2 and gs3 when you look at these it is the same as your prelims right is the same subjects almost the same subjects every person who has qualified prelims right who is writing mains will have the knowledge of these three subjects ki nahi they'll have a very good control on these subjects they'll write something or the other aisa nahi hoga ki ek ek to question chhod jayega they are not going to leave any question in this so your concentration has to be where the remaining subjects 
इसीलिए रेंज जो होता है द रेंज यू सी इन सब्जेक्ट्स में द रेंज इज वेरी लेस इफ अ पर्सन इफ द बेस्ट मार्क्स इन जी एस वन टू एंड थ्री इज वन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी द वर्स्ट मार्क्स कैन बी समवेयर अराउंड नाइन्टी बेस्ट मार्क्स विल बी समवेयर अराउंड वन टेन वन फिफ्टीन द वर्स्ट मार्क्स विल बी समवेयर अराउंड एटी तो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क्स का डिफरेंस होगा रेंज टेक दिस एस ए पेपर टेक द एथिक्स पेपर एंड टेक द ऑप्शनल पेपर सो पीपल विल हैव द डी स्कोर एज थर्टी हाइस्ट स्कोर एज वन फिफ्टी वन सिक्सटी तो रेंज कितना हुआ हंड्रेड एंड टेन वन ट्वेंटी मार्क्स सो वे डू यू हैव टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट प्रोबली दीज सब्जेक्ट्स राइट सो दैट इज वेर यू हैव कॉन्सेंट्रेशन हैज टू बी हाँ एक ही सब्जेक्ट होगा इंग्लिश लिटरेचर उसमें इंक्लूडेड नहीं है इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इज कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट नो सी यू हैव लाइक लिटरेचर सब्जेक्ट ह्यूमैनिटी सब्जेक्ट एंड यू हैव वॉट साइंस सब्जेक्ट सो लिटरेचर सब्जेक्ट में इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एक भी है एंड यू हैव कन्नडा लिटरेचर तेलुगु लिटरेचर सो दीज आर दब्जेक्ट यू हैव right okay so that's about it what you got anything else to ask uh, is that uh, for uh, world geography you know uh, world history what is the uh, notes will be provided hmm <laughs> all these subjects yeah so equal in relation to every subject and yeah some don't worry uh, the optional will be optionals will be starting later for this reason itself we don't start the optional in the first place we give you time by the time you we start optionals you will be in a position to decide which optional to take right so out of these subjects you can choose one even then after attending the class for 3 4 months if you feel like these subjects don't interest you you can choose a different option right so that's not an issue uh, for that you have to take a coaching elsewhere or prepare on your own for so that option subject in science sector uh science mein physics hai chemistry hai biology hai medical science hai math hai right ha ha yeah you have uh, mechanical engineering right electrical hai so that's about it no computer science nothing no electronics yeah economics hai you have economics in your mains economics hai Hmm? Optional me. In optional you have economics, but the Indian economy you study and the economics you have, they are worlds apart. ये जो Indian economy आप पढ़ते हो, that is very 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 simple as compared to the economics. So economics success rate is good. If you have a background in economics and you are good at it and you have interest in it, go with economics. Anything related to macro? Uh, macro and micro, दोनों मिलेगा उसमें मैनेजमेंट इज एन ऑप्शनल इफ यू हैव अ बैकग्राउंड एंड यू वो ही बात है इंटरेस्ट है तो चलो गो एंड एंड रिमेम्बर Don't choose an optional on the basis of कितना overlapping है with the GS subjects. That's why people choose both. हाँ, तो that's also not a good strategy if you ask me, right? यहाँ पे पबाड़ है और ethics है for that matter. Psychology a bit overlaps with ethics, and you have पबाड़ which overlaps with polity, right? Do not choose on this basis, right? Why? Because what you learn in पबाड़ Yes, it relates to polity, and what you study in ethics relates to psychology, but the way you write are completely different. You should write completely different stuff, right? So things will be easier, but not to the extent people boast about it, right? So you should not consider that as an yardstick to select the optional. So first two papers, you said twenty-five percentage is the maximum. For the others. For the others, no, no passing marks. You, you just have to attend the examination. 
Just write in the examination score 0 in one and in others you can score 250. No problem at all. So there is no minimum marks required in these papers. So the total of how much? 1750 marks. So 1750? Out of 1750? How much are you scoring? This time the cutoff was around 840, 850, <coughs> if I'm not wrong. So this was the cutoff out of 1750. 1750 is excluding those two first two papers. Yes. Ah, excluding first two. Okay. Isn't it? Each paper 250 marks. Yeah. There is no qualifying marks in each paper. No, right? no qualifying marks. Mm -hmm. So in exam they specify that the writing 50 was 20. Ah, that will be mentioned. Uh, uh, that will be trained. You will be trained on that. Don't worry. Is the pattern for all the papers same, sir, from GS1 to GS2? Sometimes they ask 10 markers. Sometimes if they are, you know, uh, bored of preparing questions, they ask 20 markers. <laughs> right? And there are smaller ones also, like one mark, two marks? No. Uh, no. Earlier there used to be one markers and two markers. They were, there were times like that. A science and equation pe, kahi pe ek word mil gaya in logon ko. Dal do two marker ke liye. Bechare log, they have to search all over the internet, yet they were not able to find sometimes. What is, what is, uh, no negative markings and makes or something? No, no. It is completely subjective. And then for the interview? For the interview. So, once you are done with your mains examination, right? Uh, you have uh, almost four months time during which time uh, I will schedule the interview classes right general classes will be there just like this what to do what not to do and what are the sort of questions right and uh, after that you will be allocated to certain you know there will be panels here interview panels so you will have particular dates there will be mock interviews right there will be mock interviews for you right that's about it so, so uh, it depends. It depends completely on what you have put in your biodata. Jo DAF hota hai, after your prelims examination, once you get through, you have to fill a form called DAF, Detailed Application Form. So, usme they ask you all the details they want. So, aapka property kitna hai, what work you are doing, everything will be there in that. Right? Hobbies ek area hai, interests ek area hai. Right. In those areas, if you are able to put something which is really, really wonderful and something which is a standout, just not like, what is your hobby? Kya hai? Uh, TV, dekhna, cricket, cricket. So, it's gone. It doesn't ask you. Why? Because it is so generalistic. Right. So, oh, what, are, what is he going to do? Now it's over. There's nothing in the whole data. Mein nahi hai. Interesting. Now he's going to pick on your optional subjects and the things you have studied in the past. Put something which is really, really interesting in your biodata, to kya hoga? He'll be hanging around those areas for at least some 10 minutes. Oh, kuch pucha, aapne kuch bola. Oh, fir se, they are going to ask something. So, achcha hoga. And something out of the box. Hai na? So, it's like you will be running the interview. He will not be running the interview. Kyunki ye aapka comfort zone hai. So it's also important that you put something which you know about. I said that sir, guitar play करना। ये बोलो guitar आपको पता भी नहीं है guitar। That person unfortunately he know he knows everything about guitar। पूछ लिया दो क्वेश्चन अब क्या करोगे? This thing has happened and you cannot be emotional with those people also। एक बार ऐसा हुआ था एक इंटरव्यू में that person had said कि Sir, I am, a, uh, I am from a very poor background and uh, so I saw emotional game ke liye. so he had done this trick so what they did is uh, they just asked him to enjoin them and uh, they took him out into the park so just just uh, walking on the lane they asked a simple question I see they were asking different questions and all of, out of the blue they asked how did you come and when did you come to Delhi for the interview so that person answered uh, no, he had forgotten he, he is playing the poor card. So he just mentioned he said I came by flight today morning. So Katam, the poor person hai, he came by flight today morning. So sahi baat hai. And there was another girl uh, who claimed that uh, she knew she does gardening. Right? So UPSC ke peeche bohut garden bhi hai. 
तो ऐसे ही बात करते करते दे टू कर आउट एंड दे वर यू नो देर आर स्मॉल प्लांट्स ऑल्सो कैप्टन फ्रंट ऑफ दैम जो गार्डनिंग प्लांट्स होता है सो दे ये कौन सा प्लांट है दैट्स अ वेरी कॉमन प्लांट इट्स गार्डनिंग के बारे में हमें तो पता नहीं है सो दे आर एंड शी वॉज नॉट एबल टू आंसर तो गया सो यू के नॉट ट्रिक दैम राइट यू कैन ट्रिक दैम ओनली इफ यू नो अबाउट द स्टफ कम्प्लीटली राइट सो इंटरेस्टिंग डालो something interesting yeah, no prepare yes that. prepare prepare for that that's what come from within right yeah uh, come from within yes but if you are not cultivated a habit at all <laughs> right if you don't have a hobby at all kya karoge aap what are you going to do you cannot leave the space blank right uh, that's what i am saying you have to you have to cultivate a hobby if that is difficult for you write a hobby and learn about it <laughs> राइट सो मेरा हो भी था यू नो कलेक्शन ऑफ बुक्स फॉर लाइफ टाइम पेरोजल राइट दैट्स व्हाट आई हैड रिटन सो द इंटरव्यूअर एज मी कि व्हाट इज दिस यू स्टडी बुक्स इज इट आई सेड क्वाइट क्लियरली कलेक्शन ऑफ बुक्स है मेरा तो रीडिंग नहीं है देन ही एज जो कलेक्ट करके क्या करोगे सर आई है फॉर लाइफ टाइम पे रोज लाइफ टाइम में बाद में पढ़ूंगा है ना एंड देन ही एज हैव यू नॉट स्टडीड एनी बुक एट ऑल देन आई सेड आई मैंशन थ्री बुक्स एक है ऑर्ग्यूमेंटेटिव इंडियन बाय अमत्य सिंह द अदर वन वॉज पैक्स इंडिका द अदर बुक वॉज आई डोंट रिमेंबर आई थिंक द लो लैंड और समथिंग बाई जुब्बा लहरी सो दिस इज द बुक्स आई मैंशन और द गॉड ऑफ स्मॉल थिंग्स by arunthi roy so this is the books i mentioned and they started picking on those things because they wanted to test whether i am i have read it or not so because i put it in such complex words ye to reading books hi hai aur collection of books hi hai i put it in a different way so they felt like picking on it if i had just put reading books they would have just read it a i say bol bol raha hai so everybody does it right so they would have you know passed it on so that's what you need to do put in something interesting if you are not having anything interesting put it in a interesting way at least <laughs> right so this is about the interviews so we will be guided on that part as well do but anything else so, negative yeah. marking is for both prelims and mains only for prelims not for mains only for prelims not for mains you can't have right you can't have negative marking because it is subjective So one general question: How much difficult is for working professionals? Those who does the job. Yeah. So working professionals. Uh, so have you ever come across persons who have been working and got through the examination? Yes. yes. No. So affirmative. Affirmative. Yes. Yes. You guys know it, right? Yes. So they have gotten through. Then why don't you think you can't do it? Sorry. Why don't you think you can do it? How can you get working professionals? So you have the weekend classes and weekday classes, and uh, we are open to any day at any point in time till evening five o'clock. You can walk down here and get your doubts clarified at any point in time, and uh, the syllabus will be covered at the same pace for both the working professionals as well as those people who attend the classes regularly. <coughs> right? That's not an issue. So we plan it in such a way that the syllabus gets completed. the only thing we expect from you is the attendance Since right no we are making it a point that attrition rates will be lower so we create whatsapp groups for each batch so you will be added to the group and you will be getting daily feeds related to current affairs and everything those people who are not attending the classes regularly will be cut out from the groups right so regular attendance is important uh, you you might think that uh, you know we are doing it out of spite right we are not doing it out of spite we do not have hatred against anyone it's just that it's imperative for us also to show results so if we i have to show results attendance is important right so <coughs> those three months trust me three four months if you cross that phase automatically you will become regular and uh, your curve you know will be more exponential right the improvement will be more exponential right okay so can you give me the exam calendar and the rough numbers like i saw last year like 10 lakh people have applied and uh, 
Okay, oh, yeah. all I would say is, with how many people are you competing? That's all I would like to say. When it comes to prelims examination, uh, 10,000 people get selected, let's say, with the present numbers. Uh, generally, it will be 13 to 14,000 people. So, you'll be competing with around 40,000 people. So, rest 9,60,000 people, applications. Okay. Don't worry about it. Right? So, that's if you are prepared. If you are preparing for the examination, you are competing with only 40,000 people for your prelims. For the mains examination, 14,000 people or 13,000 people go to the mains. Out of them, you are competing only with 7,000 or 6,500 people. Why? Okay. Though most of the people write the prelims examination, they will have prepared only for the prelims examination. So if your approach is you towards both prelims and mains, you will have the edge. Right? So your competition, if you are preparing for both prelims and mains together, right? Your competition with, is with how many people? 7,000 people. That's all. Right? Maybe you find so many people preparing, but no. So, prelims happens in June and mains? Mains happens in October. October. June pura month hai aapke paas. Okay. July, August, September. Four months. September the results come. Results October. Come? October. October results come and really be like that. And uh, you get the results in the month of uh, January. Okay. Right? Okay. January mein result aayega. February, March. March and April mein. Uh, interviews over and uh, you get the results in the month of May. May or April and May. Right? So I can for the regular batch, but can I come in the weekend for doubts? Oh, sure. No problem. That's not an issue. Right? Okay. Is it all? One more last question. So when you're covering the syllabus, uh, so you've given uh, material separately for prelims as well as main syllabus. So, uh, the, the plan or the strategy will be... Uh, we'll be approaching uh, the exam together. Okay. We'll be approaching the exam together. Right? Not separately for prelims, not separately for mains. No. That's a, that's a flawed strategy. That's a flawed strategy. Is it all? Yep. So, the batches are different Yes. They are different. Got any other doubts? I need time to start uh, optionals. Optionals. So we'll be starting it later. I do not know the exact date, but uh, we'll make sure that it is completed by the month of February for sure. Okay. It'll be completed. Okay. <coughs> right. Done. One question. Hmm. I've just like uh, heard like there will be like some questions being eliminated. Hmm. Yeah, there will be some questions where there will be no answers for that. Hmm. There will be four uh, option like options given, but there are no correct answers. Hmm. So, oh, there is no way it's going to be so. That is, uh, you have to choose none of the above. None of the above. So you have an option there. None of the above option. So there is nothing like that. Like there is no answer. Aisa kuch nahi hoga. You have an answer for everything. <coughs> if you don't find an answer, the UPSC, you know, is not going to give you grace marks, right? They are going to come up with an explanation which is so concocted that uh, you don't understand, right? And <laughs> they are going to justify it somehow, right? Okay. As long as it is legible, you are good. Legible, only. Three hours. Two fifty. Two fifty marks. Three hours. Oh, bella do we were told. Three hours me two fifty marks. Per day two papers. <laughs> so the first day you'll have uh, these two papers. The second day you'll have just this paper, right? Essay paper. Third day you'll have GS one, GS two. Fourth day GS three, GS four. Fifth day. Option five day may exam katam. Katam. So one day two paper. Huh. So mushkil paper ko. Matlab exam process should be difficult, na? So how are you going to make it difficult? 
less number of days, more writing, more strain for the brain. That is how exams become difficult, right? No time for revision. I say exams difficult banate. People are able to complete the paper. Yes, yes, that's very important. Jaise ki 20 question hoga, you have to complete all the 20 questions here. 20 question likna hi hai. Right, at least 19 out of 20. Okay? Right, chalo. Thank you.